be going over Kopesh Ginjet, which is essentially uh, Kopesh and Spear, Kopesh Javelin, and things like that. All right? Before we get started, you know, this, you know the routine, standard warm-up. We're going to do a little bit more with the shoulders, a little bit more with the legs this week. So, for those of you with bad knees, I totally get it. We're going to be doing a little bit of crouching, but I'll also show you ways around that. Alright? So, you definitely want to start with stretching out your legs. Okay? And bend down. For a count of ten. Nine and ten. Remember when you're doing the leg stretches or any stretches that you're doing, you don't want to bounce through them. You want to hold them static. Okay. They're unarmed, baby. Legs or feet, shoulders apart. Same Just bend down at the waist. If you can, just grab. If you can't, just try to grab somewhere between your knees and your ankles. Alright, so do well on the calf shoes work. Do a death pin, two out of ten. One, two, three, four, five. facing up if you can. Stretch really tall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now keeping your head in this position, you're going to go Bend at the waist, come down again. We're going to lower the legs a little bit more. Okay? So from here, just bend at the waist. Palms should now be facing the ground. And we're just going to hold it for the count of ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. So from here, we're going to work on the shoulders. Okay. Arms up. Circular, circles, or sorry, circles going forward. For ten. So, 
Smoke stays with, as I said, it's going to be Kokesh and Spear. The main thing with this weapon combination is you're going to be working more openings with the spear. I own teach people to hold it out. I like to actually keep it kind of flex, almost like you're holding a tennis racket in front of you. So your arm's not way out here, your arm's kind of just ready, ready for motion. Okay? Because you're going to be doing this a lot. I'm going to step again. Okay? So with this, you're going you're to play into this combination because your thrusts your thrusts are going to open for those slash going back to you know the previous week the three set or the three different areas of attack and the three shots within those areas. Kind of going back to that, you'll see that over and over again. Um, this guy has a little bit different having a system, David. This is David Tino, long time friend and long time sparring partner. So he's going to help me out a little bit today because some of the angles I want you to be able to see. I'm going to be reviewing some of the stuff that we did last week, so that way you can kind of see how they how it works with a person. So I'm going to go ahead and get you the lighter, and I will take the heavier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, so, yeah, I'll grab that. Now, yes. Um, one of the one of the notes, like I said, how I don't have you. Um, couching it or holding it far out. So you don't want it ever to be seated here. Again, you want that arm with the, with the spirit head, with the spirit in it, kind of loose, like you were holding a tennis racket out in front of you. So your arm, is, your arm should bend, bend slightly, but you're able to respond to it. To be exact, if you keep it moving kind of like how I am, that's going to be your best way to do this particular style. Because at that point, anytime you throw a shot with Kokesh, boom. Working the uh, section one, angle two. Okay? So coming down that way. Anything you step is going to be a thrust. So anytime you slash, boom, a thrust follows, or thrust first, slash second, they're going to go that way. So what you're going to see, what's up, please? Boom. Lee is going to come in, go to attack. Lee is going to look, boom. Yes. See how that goes. But that thrust always works in. Alright? That's going to be the first part of it. But what I, what I want right now is to show them kind of how this opens up a lot for the hooking. Okay. So, you don't have, you don't have to respond right away. Just get you on the yeah. So, right now I'm going to just give a slight demo of some of the hooking that we were talking about last week. This week with the but it, it's a lot of, uh, like with this, you're saying you're going to use your thrust to open up your shots. So you're going to come in here, thrust, boom. That's going to come in here, flatten out, and pull. But you've got things bound up here. That's why I say any of the hooking is a compound attack. You've got to have more 
been one thing going on. It's never going to be an opening. It's always going to be an opportunistic attack. Okay? A lot of ways you can look at it more as a defensive maneuver more than an offensive. Because anytime you're grabbing the opponent at any point to get control, you're usually grabbing to get them offline, which is a defensive move. Or grabbing to get them away from your body, which is a series of defensive moves. So if you look at it as your hooks being defensive, you'll probably get more out of the loose. So, um, right now, I'm just going to show them a breakdown of where your thrust is going to um, No, you just do the left hand and the right hand and the right hand. No, no, but it's fine. Um, we're going to do what I broke down into. The head section, okay. the three shots to the head with the thrust. So you can angle one, so you lift me down, angle two, which is that diagonal, and angle three, which is more lateral. Okay? So the way this, the way this is broken down for, the, for this class is you have your three there on the midline, it's the same thing, still three, but you've got angle one. Right. Angle two, angle three, on your midline. That's what this one is. And on your legs, it's usually just one or ah, two lateral. You don't have no that. Point C lateral, point C right. Yeah, yeah because, because I'm because I'm trying here. to because doing the demo is or showing it kind of always comes that way. But it's usually it's when done right, it's a step in. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. and it, because it brings you into your defense. Boom. So it's a bad thing. Okay. Yeah. So what we just want to do is more on the top. Oh, you're, you're not going to do that. Just sit there. Okay. 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 It's going to protect your hand on the core bench. So when you throw, boom, notice how that's out there in front of the hand? Right. Same thing. And so that makes that thrust, boom, a little bit easier. It's just, it's just a flick of the wrist to get that out there. Yes. That's the whole, that's the whole point of it. That's the, reason, that's the reason why I'm saying you never hold it pretty right. You want it here and nimble. Gonna go over three, the three of uh, three high shots um, with thrust again. Thrust of the hand. So it's one, two, two. Now the targets for this on your thrust when you're attacking. Turn here. Okay. When you're attacking, you're coming at these. Angles. Your thrusts, however, are going to be doing the exact opposite. Your thrusts are going to be centered either on the midline or on this side. The reason for that is if you're working on this side, you're pulling all their defense over here. For a thrust to come over here, you've got them open because they're, they're turning doing certain things and they're starting to present this side more and they can't pull out as quickly you can start to thrust towards the their inside shoulder to here but when you get to this point you shift it out so if you happen to get it here because they step forward that's fine but if you don't you're coming across their body to get there because anything else, what ends up happening is an increase in your defense. Because if you don't get a good 
good shot, your defense is already there and inside and in. So you're going to work that. And if they try to use that other shoulder, and you step, it's still automatically there. You've got them bound up and pushed into their body. One less item for you to worry about. Okay? So do that one more time, people. And try to do it in speed. See how that goes? Because he didn't present. With him being left handed, it's harder for him to present his opposite shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said switch. No, no, but, he, but it's fine. But it's fine. You want to keep it so that you get various things going. So it's a little bit of speed. Well, yes, but doing, but doing that presents this that shoulder. So, boom, boom, lateral, boom. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's the that's the openings that this presents. Okay, I can trust I can trust a little bit harder with these. Um, <laughs> happy enough for that. <laughs> but as you're as we as we're going now with your midline attacks again, same three. This time, what you're doing is you're going to on your diagonal cut down into that midline, you're going to be thrusting upwards. The same kind of same kind of reasoning is because you pulled the defense that way. And the reason why you don't necessarily want to come to come straight into that midsection is because it lowers your defense. If you're coming up, it's because again, you're using this to protect your hand. You're already starting that upward motion. Go with it. Just let the body go with that upward motion. Okay? Again, it's the same with the midline. That's when you can do that break, that straight. Because as you throw in that shot, you're coming straight across. So you know that tip is, it's automatically protecting your hand. And it's just straight, straight thrust from there. It's easy to talk about hard to do um, because you've got to get your body used to working in there, there, but I didn't cover this up, it was coming up, <laughs> and on that coming up shot, you're still shooting, but your shot is going right between, well, on this shirt, it's actually very easy to tell, his crotch and his knees. That's kind of where that target ends up if you're coming up. Because right. your body's going to come up. Your, your body dictates it. As your body's coming up, it's going to put that target right there. Boom, thrust it out. See, it's, it's not complicated. It just takes time to get that time. On the lower body, the lower legs, those shots get a little bit more interesting. And I'm going to need you to stand very still because it's going to come close to the windies. Okay. So it is diagonal. Thrust for that rear hip. And that diagonal down. On the lateral, diagonal, you're going to shoot towards that inner hip. Hit right there because again, coming boom, and you want your step in there. Use that thrust as your push off for your step. Okay, now as you're coming up, this thrust gets a little bit more complicated because in this, you've got to end up turning the spear a little bit more. As you're coming up, it's going to turn there, and you're just thrusting straight. So it's going to hit the groin area. Yeah. Simple, easy, but still keeping you safe. Because at any, at any point in time in this, if they want to attack, all my attack is going to be here, to here, going to 
going back to the, the Nabuti base, it's boom. Okay, they're going to attack. Boom. Keep it out, and I still maintain that center line. That's where the thrusting. The thrusting is all about controlling the center line. And this is the quickest and easiest way to do it: is to keep those motions in line. There you go. Step in with your right foot. Push out on your next motion with the thrust. And that starts to move in your body. Okay. A little bit. Instead of leading with leading with the kopesh, you're going to thrust out first again because you're going to try to pull them off their line. You're taking your spear and you're going to thrust into their strong shoulder. Boom! That gives you that shot. Okay. So I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to do it slow. Okay. So I'm going to thrust. Boom! This gives me that. A shot there. If they block it, if they block it, you push forward with your spear. That's simple. Same same thing with your with the B shot on that highest on that strong sorry weak side. Boom. Yes, that comes there. Spear is still inside. All I have to do is wave it. Not even on even on a jab with a javelin tip, yeah, you've got about an inch and a half of rusting and slashing potential. But when you're that far in already, that's nothing for you to do, and it follows again. It follows with your body as you're getting out of the way, and. Now I'm going to come up towards your ear with the kopesh. Okay. After the thrust. Just let you go after. Okay. Yes. So again, it's the same. Boom. Do it again. It's still do it again. there. Yeah, my neck. Uh-huh. That's fine. You see how that pulls? Right. My defense is still here. Still there, right. If you do anything with that kopesh, that comes out uh, and lines me up for that same. next thrust. <laughs> Because it's a, it's a two point. Anytime you're gonna do something, just put the back down for a second. Okay. Anytime you defend with this, and this is the reason why I actually have it color coded. Color coded like this. Ah, because this is this is where your hand is. This is where you have it. And if you do anything, this is what's gonna hit here to here on the on the weapon, on the opposing weapon. Boom. Or here. Right. You gotta have to get used to. This portion of it, that's the hardest thing to do. Because when you're having to trust this portion, your body naturally wants to pull back. You can't necessarily pull back. 
This is got to go rotate towards the weapon. Because if you, if you pull back, you're not going to get that rotation proper, and you create a gap here and if you just pull back. Because that is a whole lot more motion than that. So those are things you have to watch out for. But so we're going to break down and we're going to go to just the offhand pin jet or spear. Um, just to show a little bit more of what you're going to do. Go ahead and Because I'm going to be focused on defense. So, high, down, here. One, two, three. Let's just go here. And show the baseline defense for it. That's what I'm doing. Right here. If I have if I have Kopech in my hand, uh -huh. that's going to be defense is going to be here. Okay. I pulled it up because I don't have it in right, right, right. The unconscious is going to pull it up. Here. Sure. But I pull it here, and it's going to be that's the block. Right. Now, from this block, this part becomes the web. I can twist it, walk there, come in. Yeah, I can combine or explosion. Sure, sure. So that be that becomes a weapon. You've got everybody focusing on this portion being the weapon. This portion is going to be the most effective. Yeah, because you're going to instead of you know the piercing, you're going to have the bashing or the slashing. And the reason why. Another reason why I call this portion the weapon in all this, and that offhand, it can bind that side. You just shot hands. Boom. Boom. I'm locked in there. He can't do very much with that arm. Anything is disengaging, right? Exactly. Because it's, it's, it's just sticky. And now, now I've got go patch in this hand. Where do I want to throw? Okay. Now, one dirty trick. Okay. I said over here. Boom. I'm going to block it. No, because you're going to make contact. I'm going to let that con contact oh. collapse it. Boom. Bop. Simple. Simple. Now, remember. Uh, the reason why I say baseline is uh, hand jet, which is the short spear javelin. If you're a chariot player and something happens to your horse in the middle of the battlefield, you're going to have your uh, kopesh with you. You're not necessarily going to have a shield, but you can always reach down and grab one of uh, the javelin from like the DC road to in the chariot. So we had an archer or a javelinier, which but but the rider usually had at least a kopesh and something else. In my case, I say, hey, what if it's a javelin? How does that work? Because my knowledge of like the Goonies still fighting. We're gonna bring that in to the archaeology that I first saw glimpses of this. Um, you look at some of the portions of the invasion of the sea people. You see the Egyptians. As they're fighting, they have several different styles than the weapons than what's normal. So we stick, get out of that, and we kind of look at the 
like that. So I like the interest, interesting little things of, well, it's posted, it may not be 100% accurate, but it's posted between the shit of happened. So I build on that. And with the Nibuni, for example, with the Nibuni stick fighting as a background, I work with how things will work and how things will go. And again, at the Nibuni, that block piece is good. The thing is out here. It's in front of you. And it's in front of you. Now, with the stick fighting, you're not able to do, you know, thrust and things like that. On a battlefield, all those are two options. But doing Going back to watching some of the movies I did in the one, you will see a lot of, as I'm waving, I'll kind of stop myself from that as I'm, as I'm showing. Because in that, in that context, in the winning context, you're not thrusting. You know, those are the straight strikes and assists can be used off as defense. Now, is this sort of frowned upon? It's called the stick. It's like, no. it's like fencing as opposed to fighting. No, it, what happens is at that point, you need comes a little bit more personal than they get in front of you. Because this is the sport. Right. This is the fight. So it's that it's that step up. It's that now I'm not sporting anymore. This is personal. Usually, what happens is the butt of their stick. If they're going in knowing that they want trouble, the butt of their stick is false. There's a blade of it. So. <laughs> and that's that's when they usually come uh, to us. At that point, well, more serious duels. But at, at that point, it's most likely grievous injury, right? Um, not going to say death. Without it, it's bad. But it, enough to make you fear that. <laughs> it was it was more fun. Mm -hmm. So, um, we pick up pick up progression. I'm going to talk here. And I'm going to go over. I'm going to do three sets of each so that you uh, kind of understand how this works. So, upper three, middle three, Not worry about being defensive like I'm doing it, but after I do that first three, mm -hmm. you're going to do the same first. Oh, okay. Okay. So one, two, three, then one, two, three. Correct. Got it. So I'm, I want them to get, to get kind of see what it's like as well as getting used to the motion. Mm -hmm. So. I start. I started when I up. When I started my up, I went through shoulder to come up into come up into the head. That's shoulder. That's fine. It's all in the same area. So hold on. Go over. So this is like you're clear. One. Your one is crown the head to right about the collarbone. You have a fall for you. No, this is your. When I'm saying area one, this is start for area one. Two is from here. Because you have, because all of our sparring, I've never actually broken it down to you that way. And, and when you, well, four quadrants, it'll be quadrant one, strike one, or strike A, strike B, strike C. So in this con, in this context, it's area one, 
you strike A, you strike B, you strike C, for example. Do it that way because your A, your B, and your C, the motions don't change, right? The area changes, not the motion. So you get your angles. So you've dropped this point. There's still like three zones to work with. Well, on, this, on this, there's three advanced, four, five, and six. We're sticking to the baseline, how to get the engagement, how to get this going. Okay. And it gets more involved from there because I can do some, do some really jacked up stuff between and you get advanced because there's a lot of lines that you can do. I showed you what this arm that you could do a while ago mm. from here. And that revolt that comes around when you get into thrusting with the co-patch right. and things like that. So let's understand this these are out of the introductory courses and how to do it. Okay, okay. So pull that a little bit so you can see what it's like. Okay, so for you, you're gonna do that zone A, A B and C. Okay. Can I back in? Yes you can. Go Strike. Sorry, no, no, you're fine. Brain again. Oh, it's just the way it does. <laughs> way forward, way forward. Okay. I wouldn't be just standing here with my blade anyway. So I know, but, I'm, <laughs> but I have to get my motion. Right. right. Okay. So, so zone two. Okay. Zone zone two. Right. That's my turn. One, two, three. Should I be doing this? Um, I would say yes, you can. But if you flatten it out, you can do that as well. It's what's going to be optimal towards you and your body. But the reason why I say yes is to show you else to do it. This is good. This is good. Because as, you, as you're there, when you do that, your body automatically wants to pull back that way. Right. Towards that defense, which shoots that shoulder out, right. that back shoulder out. So you're going to thrust it there. Well, the question is the reason why I ask this and it, it, it's a really good thing that it's all where your hand is. Go ahead and do this too. Okay. So I see this in. So that's why I, I'm barely worth blocking too. That's close. Now if you go low, low, then I would do that. But if it's still kind of the same, but it's, it's I would not do. I would tend to just snuff it from here. Well, it's dangerous to the hand, but it depends on how where you're at. So that's what that last one that we did before was. In my mind, it was, it was, it was, it was anything. I, I could have snuff. Uh, I could have done that, or I could have done that. My, my, my mind or my body actually reacted and said, no, that's good enough to go there, right? Correct. Or if it's too, if I, if I perceive that the shot is low or the angle is different, then I would drop down. Okay. Just, just not here's, even think here's the way, this. here's the way, no, no, do it. Do the, do the drop. All right, do the drop. All right, focus on doing that. The reason behind it is that actually gives you more option. Yeah. Because um, you can drop into that, boom, but drop into it flat. Watch what I'm saying. Drop into it. Mm -hmm. Instead of going this way, mm -hmm. that, that tip is going to come out. Okay, go. So walk into it flat. You're still doing that same angle. Okay. But look at what happens when you, when you block it out. Boom, what's that block between? Mmm, nice. So you're not going out, out. You're going. Here. You're, point, you're pointing forward, and so you're still so you're, you're still forward. you're still getting that same motion uh -huh. and that same block, but you're just angling it out instead of doing it this way. You're tabling mm -hmm. it right. to an extent to where it's just so you can still have the option to mm -hmm. push it a little bit. Yes, okay. and again with the co-patch, it's either push to cut the front of the leg, mm -hmm. or you're going to set it up. For the hooking motion right there into that leg. Again, opportunity the opportunity is there to get to get control of that body. Boom, take it. At, mo at least you'll get a twink in to that back part of the knee. At least. And it's gonna tuck. If they're too tense on it, because of the way the co patch or some co are sharpened along here with that little bit of tip. You can start the catch there, but as it comes out, it's going to 
gonna terrible. dig and it's gonna cut that tendon because this is a part that's the review from last week and going going on those wraps. As we go to wrap, yeah. it's this portion right here. If you have a sharper tip edge, then it's sharper here. As you're going that wrap, that's what's going to cut it. Now, the same thing is, if you get that hook, all you're doing is that little tip. It's all your hooking length. It doesn't have to be much to get control, dig into the muscle. But if you don't get that, as you're pulling that wrap, that automatically cuts. You're going to get some sort of damage from your pull. Whether it's a tear or, or a, a, something to distract the you know, the rivals. Well, figure it's a little bit along the lines a little bit more than a distraction. Right. Because you, when you're in heat, that's part of the reason why I want to do it out here. When you're in that heat, sweat's pouring. As soon as you move any kind of little cut, it's going to add that. That's not necessarily going to be a distraction. What it does is just exaggerate. Yeah, it does. When you've got enough little cuts and the salt from the sweat and everything else burning, your body tends to start going, I don't really want to do this anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a mental thing, we'll it's your around. physical body going, oh, no, no, <laughs> This is not the way this needs to go. Yeah, so, he's never, he's never been. Uh, with me while instructing. So this is a new thing for him and it's a new thing for me. So I'm just trying to combine the two a little bit. Talk a lot of theories that are like we usually do. Yeah. Um, but again, if you build that the growth section. So we do. So one, two. There we go. One, two, and three. There we go. That's, that's what you want. I would say do it that way. But if you don't move, your instinct is not to do it that way. And you want to come up and do that third, uh, the C shot. And go and use that. Boom. It's the exact same thing. It leads you into that thrust. Your thrust is picking up going up. That's what. That's why I say it's a matter of choice. To me, it's what's happening at that moment. It's not even a purpose. Thing. It's the body. Sometimes I will, if, if, if my brain's computer says, hmm, this is, this is to be done here, I just do that. I don't even think about why it is. It's just there it is. If the angle changes just enough to make it a little lower than it should be, that's when it drops down. And then this is what happens when you do this for so long. You don't think, it just happens. Correct. So it's for <laughs> a grand total of half a. Oh, a grand total of 50 years. Yeah, let's, 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 let's not combine. It's going to seem like an ancient. But 50, 50 years of sort of sort of stuff between. Really. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. A lot more against that. Let's go into that thing, those first three. Okay. All right. Let's just do some attack. I'm going to go back to it. So, okay. So, so, so on one, A, B, C. Now, what I'm going to try to do, mm -hmm. I'm going to get a little bit more advanced with you. Instead of rocking with the kill pad, I'm going to rock the pin. Okay. So, so okay. As, I, as, as, as the shot's coming in, static block or not? Throw the static block not directly away to Okay. Back. Okay. Because it's a, it's a little bit different and it's a little bit more. Involved. That's just why it's kind of it leads into second and third okay. levels of it in all this. Right. You have to. Okay. So. Okay. Now, see. From there, remember what I said before. That back end becomes a little bit. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Step with your rear foot forward. Boom. Yeah. Now, yeah. now. Oh, that's in their face, but they need to use it. Yeah. Step out. Anything. Anything. So this is going to rotate through. 
So now this is, this is to you proper. Instead of saying, let me do that again. Instead of me saying, scrub and take it this way. I can almost do the same thing. Do it that way. That just feels stuck there. No, no, it doesn't feel as good. You're not going to do stuff that happens with that much weight. What's going to happen is that now focuses on the dip and lower. Because if you're coming across your body like that, boom. Drive, step with that rear foot. Step here with that rear foot. That's going to come. why you consider it a butt lift is because at that point you're not thinking oh this is just really easy right absolutely. it's boom i got you blocked on your with the weapon in your opposite hand mm -hmm. i have to be fit against that if i'm going to get out of this i have to control your foot movement it's a boom ah so it shoots in right now if you want the opposite thing the other thing to do is worm shot the same motion. Or just drop straight down and get it. Okay. Quick, simple in there. Yeah. When you, now, the way a lot of Egyptians wore clothing for war, it's almost like a loincloth. Right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, figure all you have to do is really want it to line. Boom. When you throw that shot, mm -hmm. the loincloth comes, comes, comes back through. Have that nice little pocket ah, right there. Right. Boom. <laughs> you put it in that. You kind of put it in that pocket, and then let it let it kind of stay there for a couple seconds. And as they try to move, and as soon as they lift that leg off the ground, what? Okay. So what happens is, boom! It's there. So it's right there. Right. As soon as they step. That foot's, off the ground, straight, right? that foot's off the ground, uh -huh. and you keep it there and throw them off. <laughs> Again, <laughs> more advanced theories, more advanced ways of doing it. All right. See, these are the lovely things about this. It's, it's quite nuanced. <laughs> that's, that's, why I keep, that's why I keep explaining to you the things that I show. Fairly, not very difficult, very slow, very, right. very slow. Once you, they're not difficult to learn, getting your timing right and everything else, that's the hard part. Listening to your body as it's going through the motion for it, that again is the hard part. Let's try that again, too, so. Go ahead and do your first one. Cool. It seems natural here, I think. This is Step with, your, step with your rear foot. When you say rear, like I am, this is my rear foot. Yeah. You're stepping like you're the, the way the way I shift. Step. I don't step. Are you talking like right. get out of the I'm, way? Kind I'm of talking. Thing? You're stepping in. Oh, okay. okay. Especially on this one. Okay. Boom. Okay. Now you see how it opens up. That opens up that tip right. Right. for the leg. So I'm That's not going. Boom. Yeah. Continue to go in. Boom. Uh -huh. yeah, the groin is, is the obvious shot too. But anywhere in this pocket. And then now now there or you, there, are you doing? You can, there all you do, you're putting it there and you're putting some weight on it. Oh, okay. As you step with what is now your rear foot okay. towards me. You reset. <laughs> okay, so you're not actually can't. pivoting around them and the, and their face your body becomes kind of static. Yes. Using using him as a pivot check because right, you right. know in a fight if you're still you're dead right. That's you're funny. forcing you're forcing that in there. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, so now let me now do the second quadrant. Now, okay. So now this is more kind of more of the same. Uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So first one. So they're the same. Yeah. There. So right. Then the second one is going to be more lateral. So now I could I could block depending on how low you want. Like I said, yeah, this is still the 
this way, and then shift. Okay, now the third one is going to be the weird one. Um, I wouldn't normally do it this way, but if you're doing a low like that, I almost want to block the whole part of the because it's already there. I don't have to keep working to get to it. I just put shift. Yes, and here's why. that feel already in position. Now, if you want to step with that lead foot towards me. Okay. Again. So you see what that you see what that is? Right. But as you do it, there's a small transition to make it happen. Okay. So we'll get get it up there and I'll show you. Boom. Transition the transition point uh -huh. is here. So the transition is Using me, you're going to target this to this shoulder. Oh, it's got a drop. Okay, so go ahead. So this, so boom. And you're just riding underneath it. Boom. Okay, so am I, am I still stepping on that step one? Yes. Yeah, but you're in, you're in deep on that shoulder. Okay. And at that point, you don't stay in this for even half a second. Right, it's just a transition. It's a transition. Now you step that real foot towards me. Just continue on. Yes. Why? <laughs> See what happens to the body? Yeah. You're off. You're, you're bound. <laughs> but I can't, if I lift to attack again, that sinks in there. Yeah. At that point, I'm locked. So. I can't throw a shot. So the logic is just to shift. Shot remember the, remember the three step the three step rule? If you're retreating more than three steps, you'll usually end up on your ass. Right. Okay. Okay. Here, from the point, <laughs> from that point, when you do, when you up under there, uh -huh. that should be their second step. Your last step that but you do yeah. is your third, and you're at that point of pulling them over right. because they can't get. Yeah, the whole free. balance is off at this point. Yes, that's your control. <laughs> that's where it comes in. All right. The Historical African Martial Arts Association's Hero Series celebrates the great military leaders of Africa's past. Order yours today at teespring.com.